where you live, the food you eat and how you move around. All of these things are going to change in some way, because Europe is setting itself a goal of becoming the first climate-neutral continent. They call it the Green Deal. Let's have a look at some innovative projects that give us a glimpse of this cleaner future. Less waste, healthier food with fewer pesticides and fertilizers, better public transport alternatives and cleaner energy are just some of the targets. Let's see what this Green Deal wants to achieve. By 2050, Europe wants to become the world's first climate neutral continent. In order to do that, the EU has to decarbonize the energy sector and at the same time to help industry become innovative and create green global leaders. Renovating buildings is among the priorities to help cut energy bills and energy use. The EU wants to roll out cleaner, cheaper and healthier forms of transport. One of the success stories is this electric ferry that could transform maritime traffic. Ellen covers up to 22 nautical miles and connects two Danish islands. This is her home port on the Danish island of Eira. It's here that Ellen loads her passengers and recharges her batteries. Once disconnected, the 750-ton ship leaves for one of its five daily trips to the neighboring island. This project was co-financed by the European Union in cooperation with islanders eager to achieve carbon neutrality. We are fully electric, so there's no uh, oil on board at all to run anything on the, on the ship. One of the challenges, which has also been with the electric car, is the, is the range or the distance. And the longer distances you start covering, of course, the more uh, usable the technology becomes. And I think in Europe, it's probably about 80% of the ferry transportation that can actually be covered with a 22 nautical mile range. So that's a lot of ferries that you can change into uh, battery electric. Another feature, these wind turbines produce 130% of the electricity needed on Aera. Some of the surplus is injected into Ellen. Ferries are today the largest polluters on the island. Ellen will save 2,000 tonnes of CO2 emissions a year under the hull, four quiet engines and 56 tonnes of lithium-ion batteries with a capacity of 4.3 megawatt hours, but no backup oil generator. We reserve at all times a certain amount of energy on each battery room. So um, if you lose a battery room or have to shut it down for some reason, there will always be guaranteed to be enough energy left on the other room to sail back to harbour, to, uh, to do all the emergency procedures that could be involved in, a, in a, an emergency at sea. Upstairs, all the comforts of a classic ferry, and even more, no noise or smell to ensure a quiet crossing for passengers. And the crew have quickly become familiar with this new tool. The navigation is similar. The only difference is we have two more screens with the power management system, uh, where you, on a regular ferry you have a fuel gauge. Actually, the uh, electric motors are more uh, powerful because you have the full torque immediately from, from the bottom. So that's quite nice. You can almost drive her like a speedboat. To further our understanding, we swapped the Baltic Sea for the Swiss lakes to visit an energy storage company that was selected to power the ferry. This battery manufacturer has developed several innovations to meet the requirements of the project in terms of safety and efficiency. The company already has 25 orders for electric ships, some even larger than Ellen. We in Europe have taken the lead in electrification of marine vessels worldwide. The eFerry project will give crucial operational data, safety data, will help set standards not only in Europe, but for the world. This example shows how mobility changes rapidly. Another core objective of the Green Deal is building renovation. We show you a house of the future where smart windows become solar energy collectors. Here in Bulgaria's capital, Sofia, researchers and architects joined forces to create smart windows. Inside the windows is a continuous flow of a mixture of distilled water and glycol, which serves as antifreeze. 
Using solar cells, the windows absorb solar radiation and turns it into thermal energy to heat the building's interior. The advantage of using liquids instead of air inside the glass is that water is more dense, so it absorbs infrared light in a broader range. Scientists at this European research project are using the experimental pavilion to test the system's efficiency. Temperature and humidity are constantly monitored inside the building to see if energy can be produced and used long term or in very different climatic conditions. We measure the temperature inside the windows. We measure it every 20 centimeters, starting from the floor and then going up the window. So we know how the heat is distributed inside every window. And then what we have is we measure what we feed in on the window and what is uh, getting out of the window. The technology was developed here in Madrid. Scientists want the Waterflow smart glazing system to ensure energy efficiency, not to act just as a transparent insulator. So the system must be able to maximize solar heat during the winter and avoid overheating in the summer. If the outside temperature is too cold, we can stop the water flow. The sun heats up the water chamber between the glass panes and the windows become hotter. If the outside temperature is warm or if inside the building the temperature is already comfortable, we can turn on the water flow to distribute the energy to other places in the building. Transparent glass acts in active ways. It acts like a skin that allows the whole building to thermoregulate itself. Scientists think the technology could help design the so-called nearly zero energy buildings of the future. Researchers say the system's technology is now ready to be scaled up to industrial production. The idea is to have buildings that reduce their energy demands as much as possible, while at the same time producing thermal energy. This is our solution to improve and maximize the net balance of energy that every building needs. These are just two of thousands of initiatives across Europe that are all moving in the same direction, creating better quality of life and climate neutrality by 2050.